and at the same time God doesn't react he doesn't get angry God doesn't react he doesn't get angry circumstances don't make God do something no that there are situations doesn't make God do something because if God will do something because there's a situation it means he's reacting it means he's reacting it is not because you have a problem that God will do something if God is doing something because you have a problem then it means he is not God that means that problem uh, took him by surprise but God doesn't react God doesn't get angry before the need arise he had made provision on Mount Moriah on Mount Moriah Abraham said the Lord shall provide himself the Lord shall provide himself that means the provision of the Lord is himself the Lord shall provide himself that is why all of God's promises and all of God's blessings are in him in him everything God will do is in Christ he does not react he is never late he is not in a hurry he's in charge nothing takes him by surprise nothing takes him by chance that's why he is God He's omniscient. He, he has foreknowledge. He sees ahead of time. And in his predestined plan, he has already taken care of the matter before the matter arrived. I'm teaching here. He doesn't react. So he does not do something because of his situation. Before that situation was ever conceived, he had already done it. Abraham said to the to the young lad the Lord shall provide because the young lad said father we see the wood we see the, the the fire where is the lamb he said the Lord will provide himself the Lord will provide himself because it was a type of of, of the of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ the Lord shall provide himself and when they got to Mount Moriah the Lord provided himself oh yes don't touch that boy take him off uh, what, what, what benefit will I get in killing Isaac Isaac is just a type look there there's a ram cut up by the thick of the horns take that put on the altar and, and the Bible says, we brethren as Isaac was we are so Isaac was to die we were to die and the ram showed up which was jesus coming to take our place that's why jesus said abraham saw my days and he was glad when did abraham see the days of jesus on mount moriah at the place of the substitutionary sacrifice the lord shall provide himself nothing takes god by chance your healing is not going to happen your healing already happened you're only coming to find out about it jesus is not going to die again to heal that one death took care of the woes of humanity that one death took care of all of all of the problems that a man will ever face that one death your salvation was provided in that death your health was taken care of in that death remember sin entered into the world and death by sin so when the root of death has been dealt with then the branches that came with death will either sickness disease and all of human depravity are branches of sin until sin came into the world there was no death in the world we see what god created god's creation of this planet in chapter genesis chapter one uh, the bible tells us in genesis chapter one verse 31 and god saw everything that he has created and that it was very good sickness is not very good disease is not very good poverty is not very good ahead of time god already provided himself god is not going to bless you he has blessed you
so there's nothing god is going to do anymore he has already done all in christ jesus is the fulfillment of all things in luke chapter 24 verse 25 he looked at those disciples of his on the way to his house and he said to them oh fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken what has the prophet spoken ought not christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory talking about the prophets of the old testament this was the message of the prophets of the old testament that the christ will suffer and out of his suffering glory will follow all right and then beginning from moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself verse 44 and he said unto them these are the words which i spake unto you while i was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled i am the fulfillment of all things all the promises of god all the blessings of god all the goodness of god all the favor of god all the mercy of god all the grace of god packaged in a man called jesus the fulfillment of all of god's promises so all the promises of god are in him in him when you have him you have all of god's promises fulfilled when you have him jesus you have all of god's promises fulfilled ah, paul, paul paul speaking to the church at corinth he says sylvanus and i we didn't tell you that god's promises are yea and nay they are not yea and nay there's nothing like sometimes when you pray god says yes and some other times god says no and some other times god says wait there's no such thing in the scriptures all the promises of god are in him yes there's no no in christ there's no no yes means fulfilled that's the meaning of yes all the promises of god in him are fulfilled glory to god oh not some of them all the promises of god in him yes amen fulfilled jesus is the amen of god everything god said jesus says amen to it fulfilled jesus is the fulfillment of everything he gave us all of it fulfilled in christ everything all of god's plan for mankind fulfilled where in christ and where is christ in you christ in you god is not going to god has you didn't hear that god is not going to god has didn't brother peter give us an insight into that he had given unto us whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you escape the corruption that is in the world through loss and he hath given unto us he hath he hath given unto us all things that pertain all things he hath he hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge through the knowledge god is not going to god has already done but you take you take delivery of what has been done through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue we are not called to shame we are not called to disgrace we are called to glory and virtue christ in you the hope of glory no shame lift your right hand and shout all things are mine say louder all things are mine loudest all things are mine say i'm not the needy i'm the supplied for you know brother hagin brother hagin told the story of how god healed him he got healed from that sick bed walked out of that sick bed and the devil came back to him with symptoms of that paralysis
That is what people say you need deliverance. No. He said when the devil came back to him with the symptoms of the paralysis, he was in the toilet. I heard him tell this. And the devil whispered to his ears, the sickness is back. And this time around, you will not be healed. So he started laughing. <laughs> he laughed until the devil said, Why are you laughing? <laughs> oh, <laughs> your landlord said, If you don't pay your rent, I'll throw you out. <laughs> he will get afraid. Because normal people don't behave like that. <laughs> I feel this thing. <laughs> he said, the devil said to him, why are you laughing? Then he started laughing again. <laughs> because that means I've gotten the devil's attention. So after laughing for a while, he said, I'm laughing because I don't need healing. Then he started laughing again. <laughs> <laughs> then he stopped he said i have it i'm not looking for it i don't even want to be healed i don't want it i'm not looking for it i'm not in need of it i was healed he said the symptoms just vanished instant fear the symptoms disappeared that was the end <laughs> oh my goodness now see let me talk to you Simit Wigglesworth the apostle of faith <laughs> told the story of how one night God's people must come to knowledge hey, yeah, 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 yeah. you know I'm just imagining uh, you know the, the way this revolution is going on all over the world I'm just imagining all over the world millions are literally following these teachings I'm imagining a generation of millions of people all over the world who come face to face with the revelation of Jesus do you know what will happen to this planet can you imagine everywhere people walking in knowledge people walking in revelation everywhere Jesus is just all over the place hey 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 hey, hey, hey that's why they are afraid but their fear has come on them and you didn't hear me that's why they are afraid but their fear has come on them this is the day of jesus christ this is the day of jesus christ but above all this is the day of jesus and his sons jesus and his brothers where are the brothers somebody shout revelation shout it again revelation louder revelation loudest revelation <laughs> glory to god please sit down and listen see me to said he was sleeping up in the room upstairs and he had noise in the city room downstairs it was like a, a story building up there the noise became increasingly much so he took the hurricane lamp and peeped from the balcony into the sitting area and saw a creature sitting with two horns downstairs so Simit Wigglesworth looked at him and said is it you when you finish put the room the way you met it before you get out good night got back on his bed and slept woke up the next day the room is back to the way it was not a prayer they that know their god yeah. 
God doesn't react. Please, that's very important. God does not react. There is nothing God is going to do for you anymore. He has already done it in Christ. He that spared not his son, but gave him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All the promises of God are in him. Yes. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. God doesn't get angry. God doesn't react. Why? He knows everything. The fact that he knows everything doesn't mean he, he is in control of everything. He knows everything. But he is not in control of everything. But he has taken care of everything. He knows everything. He is not in control of everything. But he has taken care of everything. We are in Christ. Christ.